and we sat together in Spanish class, and, and now she's going to be an empty desk. Liam Kiernan lost his best friend Gina Montalto yesterday afternoon when the world fell apart at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. I can't believe that I'm here right now, and why did, why did I get out and she didn't, and why did this happen? Like, we could have done so much to stop this. Holy sh it's a scene we all hope we would never see again. I was in the classroom and all of my ear was shocked and I was just like, oh my gosh, what's happening? It was the last period of the day when the gunman opened fire with his AR-15. <laughs> a school employee immediately calling a code red. So right now we're in a school, an active shooter. It's not a drill. I heard one gunshot. We thought it was a drill initially, but it's oh. not. The fire alarm got pulled and kids were evacuating. I heard five pops. The suspect, a former Douglas High School student, allegedly shot into at least five classrooms on two floors. He was just very focused. He was very focused on what he was doing. Terrified students hid in locked classrooms. I couldn't believe something would happen to a school that got voted the safest place the year before. First responders on the scene desperately tried to track down the suspect. Does he know where the shooter is? We don't know, but we're, we're entering the building. Erica Duvall filmed this as the police broke the window of her classroom door to gain entry. Breach. You broke your window. Yeah, okay, we're the door. In another classroom, screams of anguish from the wounded <laughs> as police led the rest of the students to safety. I thought I was going to die. Ten people still in the hospital, and 17 are dead, including teachers, students, and coaches. 14-year-old Martin Duque, a freshman, his older brother, also a student at Douglas, shared the news on Instagram, writing, words cannot describe my pain, I love you, brother. Jamie Gutenberg, also 14, her father accepting condolences on Facebook, I am broken, he wrote, hold your children tight. Gia Montalto's mother mourning the loss of her daughter, writing she was smart, loving, caring, and a strong girl who brightened any room she entered. Authorities say the 19-year-old suspect eventually dropped his rifle on the third floor stairwell and exited the school. The suspect crossed fields and ran west along with others who were fleeing and tried to mix in with the group that were running away. Incredibly, he then went to a nearby Walmart, bought a drink, then went to a McDonald's. He said he was a McDonald's by the school. Around an hour after he opened fire, the suspect was spotted by Officer Michael Leonard. He looked like a typical high school student, uh, and for a quick moment, I thought, could this be the person? Is this who I need to stop? He was apprehended about two miles from the high school. The fact is, law enforcement responded in a very quick manner to the school and probably established a perimeter to ensure nobody was able to escape. However, the suspect clearly had in his mind he was going to shoot and then try to escape, and he was able to get outside of that perimeter before it was formed and contained around the school. Within hours, police say he confessed to the killings, stating he was the gunman who began shooting students. Investigators are piecing together the suspect's background. Adopted as a baby, he lost his father when he was five. Just last November, he lost his mother to the flu and went to live with a friend's family. The neighborhood where he grew up, big homes with well-manicured lawns. Neighbors say it was so normal, the suspect really stood out. Aggressive, crazy, weird, psycho. Brody Spino spent nearly a decade a few doors down from the suspect. He remembers him having a violent side, even at a young age. He like cornered a squirrel and was like pegging like rocks at it, like trying to kill it, like it was just weird. Former classmates paint an even more twisted picture. They say the suspect was obsessed with guns and was disciplined for bringing bullet casings to school. About a year ago, I saw him upset in the morning and I was like, what's up with you? He's like, I swear to God, I'll shoot up this school. According to ABC affiliate WPLG, the suspect was expelled on February 8th last year. Three days later, he bought the AR-15 at this gun store less than 10 miles from the school. Once the school expelled the suspect, they should have known that he may have had a beef with the school. His social media post also suggested something might be off. In uh, September of last year, I received a comment on my YouTube channel. I'm going to be a professional school shooter, and 
thought that to be odd and disturbing, so I forwarded that uh, screenshot to the FBI and reported it to YouTube. The FBI says they investigated. The FBI also conducted internal database reviews and open source checks. No additional information was found to positively identify the person who posted this comment. There was no connection found to South Florida. Tonight, the agency saying they couldn't track down who the user was, and they're conducting a review of how that tip was handled. If, as the FBI said, they were not able to determine who that person truly was, my question is, how many people are there out there in America who have posted similar type of blogs that indicate that they are inclined to commit violence, and they have not been able to determine who those people are? That's a huge problem. Sources tell ABC News this social media account belongs to the suspect. This photo shows him holding a pistol. In another, he's holding a large knife. Law enforcement sources say these social media pages are now being scrutinized for clues. Law enforcement sources tell ABC News the suspect said voices in his head directed him on the attack. He is on suicide watch. Uh, the child is, is deeply troubled. Some proposed regulations to limit access to guns have broad support among the American public, like expanding background checks and a ban on gun purchases by people on no-fly lists. This is something that we can't like, keep happening, because if we do and we get used to it, it's going to happen again. This is a time for our country to take a look in the mirror and realize there's a serious issue here. President Trump addressed the nation today. No child, no teacher should ever be in danger in an American school. But he never mentioned the word gun once, instead defining the issue through mental health. We are committed to working with state and local leaders to help secure our schools and tackle the difficult issue of mental health. But just weeks after taking office last year, the president blocked an Obama-era rule that made it tougher for the mentally ill to obtain guns. Mother Lori Aldiff, who lost her 14-year-old daughter Alyssa in the shooting, expressed her outrage directly at the president on CNN. President Trump, you say, what can you do? You can stop the guns from getting into these children's hands. The type of gun used in this school shooting, the AR-15. It was used in Las Vegas last year, San Bernardino in 2015, and Sandy Hook in 2012. I have hunted all my life. I have had guns all my life. I still hunt with my son. But an AR-15 is not for hunting, it's for killing. In Florida, you can purchase an AR-15 at age 18, which is exactly what the suspect did. They're technically adults, but we really have to take a look at that law and regulation and determine whether an 18 or 19 year old are really able to handle that kind of weapon safely and are in a position mentally to not go into a school and shoot everybody. There are an estimated 5 to 10 million AR-15 rifles in the United States. This afternoon, the suspect appeared via video conference for his bond hearing. I have something very important to tell you. You're charged with some very serious crimes. Facing 17 counts of premeditated murder and held without bond. And I find probable cause. I further find the proof of guilt to be evident. Tonight, as America always does after a horrific act of gun violence, a search for answers to the question, why? But the even bigger question, will the answers come in time to prevent another horrific shooting? For Nightline, I'm Tom Yamas in Parkland, Florida. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.